Hello everyone, welcome to this new Analyst Angle and I am joined today by Prakash Darji who is the uh, GM uh, of the uh, DXBU uh, uh, at Pure. So we are very close now to Pure Accelerate 2024. Uh, in a couple of business days we'll uh, be there in Vegas. Uh, so um, what I'd like to do is uh, cover the news here um, uh, with you Prakash. And, uh, but before we do that, because there's quite a bit to cover, can you tell us what is the DXBU? Great acronym though. Yeah, look, I run the Digital Experience BU, largely look at looking at how we can transform the storage experience to be a SaaS experience and generally appear responsible for recurring revenue. Thank you. And we'll talk quite a bit about that. I know there's some news around not only, not only digital experience, uh, but also some of the great uh, as a service uh, offerings uh, that are coming your way. Uh, very soon. So let's get started maybe with uh, the start of the platform. What is changing? What is new? What are you updating? And what are you going to be announcing uh, in Vegas? Well, when we think about a platform, you first need to ensure that you have a consistent operating environment. So uh, I have this slide that you know we can look at, which looks at the four layers of our platform. One, there's an evergreen architecture where you get better over time, right? The, a platform needs to ensure you get consistent improvement over time with a single unified infrastructure. So you can support all types of workloads by deploying whatever you need. And most importantly, you need a single operating system. So your management, your APIs, your command lines, how you interact is uniform. And then you can deliver a service to someone that says, you know what? Why worry about a box? Why not let Pure manage and performance or capacity or SLA. So when we talk about the platform, we talk about these four layers of the platform. You know, I call it the platform sandwich. Yeah, at the top, the top bun of the sandwich is the storage of the service. The bottom bun is our evergreen architecture. And really the meat of what you get is the purity operating system with management at scale. Well, I love, I love the sandwich analogy. I use that all the time myself. And there's quite a bit of meat, and we're going to talk about it. One of the things I'm curious about is, look, there's been a lot of talk about AI. So there's the buzz, and there's the reality. So what I'm curious about is, what are you doing? Uh, and there are already two conversations here. First one is, what are you doing to leverage AI, and maybe even Gen AI, uh, to help with the sandwich, the platform? And what are you doing um, also to support uh, environments uh, at the end user level who are building their AI infrastructure against use cases that may be difficult without having some guidance. So let's start with the uh, uh, AI as a feature. What are you doing around, around that to help your users uh, use the platform more easily? Yeah, look, AI is interesting in that, you know, it's been around, yet it's new, right? Like, so, you know, there was like traditional AI where we've been training models for a long time, but they were proprietary models trained on dozens of parameters. Now we, we're using community models like Llama or GPT-4, where we could go ahead and train on you know, millions of parameters to ask more open-ended questions. So if I cut over, let's, let me actually just get into the product and show you some of the things we're doing, uh, turning this into a live product demo session. <laughs> so here you see our security assessment, and we use this to look at a customer's landscape and give them operational security assessment interview uh, capability, saying you're using a password or whatever, but a uh, default password. But let's say you know we have this co-pilot now. We're using AI trained on a co-pilot, where you can ask it to just give you a security update on what's going on in your landscape. So you know you can use natural language. You've seen a lot of things in this landscape. We're making available this co-pilot and technical preview to customers where it'll go ahead and it'll look at the customer's environment and actually generate like, these are the things that you need to focus on all the way down to, you know, how do you improve this specific array? What is the command you need to run, et cetera? So, you know, this is saying across your administration, across your environment, these are the things that, you know, are fully implemented. These are the things that, you know, need improvement. And unlike it just being super open-ended, you want it to be conversational. So we're training it where you can, you know, continue the conversation saying, okay, do you want more information about this? Right? And I could say yes, or I could say I want to know about protocol features, et cetera. So it's 
in, and traditionally you stay in text, we've done something unique where we're bringing elements of our product and our intelligence, like this table, into the conversation. So you actually can navigate between a, you know, a conversation and a user experience more seamlessly. Um, so, you know, that's that's kind of what it's getting into from an AI co-pilot standpoint. I, I love this. Uh, this is great. Um, I think it really helps and, you know, it guides the teams through uh, the complexity uh, of, uh, you know, data and, and what has become very complex infrastructure. Uh, and I also like the um, aspects associated with the proactive management uh, that I believe the solution provides here. So I do expect to see more around Copilot uh, moving forward and I'll probably go take a, a closer look at the actual demo uh, in Vegas uh, in person. One thing uh, I wanted to ask you, I sort of suggested this, this is AI uh, in play or in use to support again, simplify uh, and optimize the use of your platform. But let's talk about how end users can now build their own AI infrastructure. What are you doing to really help today's environment in AI? I mean, there's so much complexity, it's early stages, people are struggling to figure out what use cases to go after. Uh, how do they make the right calls and do so in a way that's gonna be uh, operationally efficient and economically efficient? Yeah, look, it, it's interesting. So to answer that, you got to kind of understand what's changed in the workload paradigm. So let me cut over to these slides where you can actually see um, what our traditional workloads were. You know, you would have structured workloads like databases and VMs and unstructured workflows where you had file systems or you had like large streaming telemetry things. And in most of those workloads, you would have to scale performance and capacity together. Well, AI is a little bit different. Where your training and inference worlds are very different. Most training models we see, um, you know, sub 50 terabytes, a lot of parameters, a lot of computational, permu uh, commu computational perm uh, permutations. So we've designed this new Evergreen One AI service tier where it gives you provisioned performance with a marginal rate for usage. So we've decoupled the you know, appliance framework and the way I talk to people about this is, it's optimized to keep your GPUs the most expensive asset in your data center utilized. And if you look at the slide, I kind of give the people the analogy that it's like yeah, the water bill in your home, where you have a pipe to your home. It's a one inch pipe, two inch pipe, three inch pipe, or four inch pipe. That guarantees the water capacity that goes into your home. That has to be the provisioned pipe in your home and then you pay for the water usage that you use. So we've designed this evergreen one for AI offering based on this paradigm where you have provision performance. What is the throughput you need to keep your GPUs utilized at 100%? And it's a consumption model. So you just set up, this is training. I'm setting it up, I need this size pipe. And then you pay a marginal usage for data, right? It's a different way of thinking about the problem. And given that it's a service, Pure will deploy whatever hardware we need to meet those SLAs. So you can ensure you're deploying and running and operating efficiently in your AI lifecycle. Right, I think that's really great because I think one of the objections we're hearing is, well, we are not sure what the ROI is, how do we control the costs, how much do we need, uh, we're just getting started, what are the use cases that we think are gonna fly, and then how do we build up on those? And I think you're really providing end users here with a lot of options uh, to get started. And more importantly, I like the efficiency aspect. And clearly it's something you've been building for, for years in uh, other areas of storage, but now applied to AI, I think it makes a lot of sense. I know you're also making some interesting um, uh, moves around certification uh, with NVIDIA um, and that you're also working on uh, a mission critical uh, cluster. Uh, so could you cover that very quickly? And then I'd like to jump into cyber resilience, which is another great topic. Yeah, so in, in the, we're working with NVIDIA and typically NVIDIA SuperPod has been InfiniBand focused. Well, a lot of customers have an ethernet network. So we've been working with NVIDIA to certify our products with Ethernet into, with, into their SuperPod reference architecture. So we're announcing that NVIDIA will be with us at the conference and you know, we'll be sharing what we're doing in that area. But as people are deploying large language models, 
we found that the data agent deployments that you do are typically done using containers. When we built our co-pilot, we did that as well. Um, but you need, like AI grew up in high performance computing which means, you know, how do you secure it? Well, it's a bunch of boxes in a lab somewhere, right? When you're bringing that into an enterprise application, you have to think differently. So we're announcing this concept of a secure application workspace where you can deploy stateful containers for the data agent using Portworks, and that can create a vertical slice all the way down to a secure multi-tenant in the storage array. So you're looking at creating these secure to application workspaces for data agents, um, all the way from container through storage um, using our secure application workspace concept. So that'll help mainstream AI deployments. And when you're doing your you know, security reviews or stride reviews that people do as they're securing their landscapes, they can use this secure application workspace concept to bring AI deployments into the enterprise. Right, and, and that's absolutely key for a variety of reasons. Um, I think policy governance is definitely one of them uh, when we talk about AI and all these deployments that need to be controlled. And I like how you're building in uh, the Portworks technology uh, in this um, um, sort of dimension of making it an actually operationally uh, usable, secured um, application environment. So um, look, um, we talked about security a little bit here. Uh, I'd like to maybe jump to a topic that I love, which is cyber resiliency. Not that I don't like AI, love it too. But now we're starting to converge a number of themes. Uh, and I'm very interested in what is changing in your portfolio, in your offerings, and um, you know, in terms of what you're doing for cyber resiliency. You've, it's an area you've been really uh, at the forefront of, in my opinion, in your space in the past few years. We know ransomware and cyber attacks are not going away anytime soon. Uh, it's an existential question uh, for all of your customers. Uh, so curious to see what you're going to be announcing. Yeah, well, um, largely, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head that this is not new, right? We've always ensured we've had to build in protection into storage. So if I cut over, we've aligned our protection philosophy based on the NIST 2.0 framework. So you can see that across uh, identifying, protecting, detecting, responding, recovering, governing, we've had a set of capabilities, whether it be always on safe mode snapshots or ransomware recovery. These are capabilities that are built into our platform and we've consistently been improving with new capabilities because you know, as AI gets in the hands of the bad guys, your signature variant attack patterns get more complicated. So how do we build on that and get better? So at Accelerate this time, we're identifying this new AI co-pilot. I showed that where you can actually get um, improvements in how you secure your operations. Um, built on the security assessment, which scans and looks at your operational security proactively. And there we've introduced a data protection assessment in the past, which we're updating to look at the data and give customers a way of protecting their fleet proactively with policy-based self-service. As you know, we previously looked at things like data reduction change rates in storage, but now the attack patterns are different. So from a detection standpoint, you can detect denial of service attacks or data exfiltration attacks through the AI capabilities we're using for detection. And when something happens, because lo and behold, if something happens, you need to get up and running. So we've enhanced our ransomware SLA to include all types of disasters, whether it be man-made, human-made, et cetera, and give customers an SLA and a, around the guaranteed time to get back up and running with the resilience SLA for Evergreen One, where our customer success managers who are running and operating the environment um, from our SaaS, uh, SaaS console, will proactively look at any security assessment issues and automatically resolve and close those by helping secure the customer's environment on their behalf. So that's an option. Customers can you know, buy into our resilience SLA. And that will ensure that we do that and give the customer CISOs a security audit report every quarter that says, this is what we found enclosed in your environment in terms of a security issue. 
Yeah, it's very clear that we've moved into a different world. I mean, it's not the uh, era of disaster recovery anymore. It's really about cyber recovery. And that's really what resilience uh, is all about here. So uh, great to see the um, uh, investments uh, and continued investments, I should say, uh, in uh, this area. So uh, as we wrap up, uh, I know there's also uh, some level of update around storage as a service. Um, can you tell us more about what you're introducing uh, at Accelerate this year? Yeah, so, you know, storage as a service is not just, you know, this cash or credit, how you buy thing, right? There's three elements to it. So if we cut over to the slides, you know, we talk about it as it's how you buy, it's how you operate, and it's how you experience. You know, how you buy is, okay, do I want to buy it and own it, or do I want to, you know, use it and pay for utilization? How you operate is the vendor running things on your behalf, and how you experience is, hey, I'm going into a SaaS management plane and I'm setting my policies and using. Well, in the economic world, we're announcing a new AI-powered reserve expansion recommender. It's kind of the Netflix recommended for you saying, hey, you've been on demand, these are your workloads, you can simulate that and actually help you optimize and save. From an operation standpoint, we typically see, you know, Customer set up reserve commits at sites. That's how it, that's how it works at AWS, Azure, and Google, where you, you know, this is my reserve commit at the site. But that's kind of limiting because, you know, what if you need to consolidate sites? What if you're over overusing in Singapore and underusing in the UK and you need to rebalance? So the site rebalance SLA ensures that Pure can allow you once annually to rebalance your capacity reserves wherever you need, inclusive of us shipping the hardware and moving the workloads is required. And then, and then finally, because this is a SaaS offering with continuous improvement, um, our unified block and uh, file tiers are just getting, our higher tiers are just getting 50% faster. So we're just updating the SLA so the customers have better performance. And only we can do that because we have the evergreen architecture that can non-disruptively upgrade a customer's environment based on our platform. So, you know, that largely means that customers get block file object, they can deploy it where they need, and they get these 10 concurrent SLAs from Pure, so they can trust that, you know, trust in the outcome. Well, we've covered a lot of ground, and I love this update on uh, storage as a service. I mean, literally, it's whatever storage you need, and you can deploy it in any way you want in the cloud, hybrid, co-location, on-prem, obviously, uh, and the great SLAs that you're delivering uh, across the board, uh, including for cyber resilience as well. So, look, uh, Prakash, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'll see you in Vegas. And to our viewers, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you on the next Analyst Angle.